Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Aida, and today my goal is to get you to rethink negative emotions. You will wake to the shrill sound of your alarm going off. Before you know it, you're feeling a medley of panic, stress, and defeat, because it suddenly dawns on you that this week alone, you have two midterms, one assignment, and one presentation. When you arrive for your 8.30 class, you overhear the midterm grades have just been released. You log in to check your mark, and as soon as you see it, your heart sinks. You can add this to the list of things that just seem to be going wrong. As students, we have this erroneous belief that these emotions are signs of weakness. So instead, we decide to push back the sadness, ignore the stress, and get on with our day. But who's to really blame us for thinking that? Our cultural discourse has dichotomized emotions as being either positive or negative. But this is inherently misleading, because all forms of emotional experience are meaningful. In fact, these negative emotions, like stress and sadness, even have evolutionarily adaptive value. What exactly do I mean by this? Let's begin by talking a little bit about evolution. Evolution is the change in heritable traits over time. Darwin proposed that this occurs through a mechanism called natural selection, whereby traits that help an individual survive will be passed on to offspring through generations. So when I say that negative emotions have evolutionarily adaptive value, I mean that things like stress and sadness actually helped our ancestors survive and even thrive in their environments. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, how could feelings of sadness have possibly helped our ancestors? To answer this question, I want you to think of sadness as being analogous to physical pain. When you fall and scrape your knee, feelings of physical pain promote avoidance of actions that would lead to future tissue damage. In that same, very same way, after a specific occurrence, feeling sad promotes avoidance of situations that would lead to a similar thing arising again. This was incredibly important for our ancestors. If they experienced a particularly devastating event, like loss of a child, feeling of sad was, sadness would promote avoidance of situations that would lead to this happening again. So feeling sad is a perfectly expected, normal, and even beneficial response. Another perspective suggests that depressed mood might be an adaptive response to dealing with complex social problems. So essentially what happens is feeling depressed allows you to reallocate your attentional resources towards the source of the problem. And by acknowledging your feelings, you allow your attentional resources to be devoted to solving that complex social problem. And just like feelings of sadness and depressed mood might be an adaptive response to dealing with social problems, we can think of stress as being an adaptive response to dealing with the demands of our everyday life. When you feel stressed, the body produces the fight or flight response. This is accompanied with a slew of physiological changes, including increased heart rate, increased breathing, tensing of muscles, and increased alertness. This is an incredibly adaptive response because it allows us to deal with life-threatening situations, like attack by a predator. Although we don't face the same threats our ancestors did, we still as students face a slew of other stressful situations, like constant deadlines, looming assessments, and the constant demand to always perform. It might sometimes feel like stress is hindering your ability to get through your daily activities, but the opposite might actually be true. Moderate levels of stress have been shown to enhance experiences and lead to the consolidation of memories. So feeling stressed about that upcoming exam might not be such a bad thing. Those feelings of stress while preparing for that exam will better enhance the consolidation of memories so when a similar situation arises, you'll be better able to cope with that. Alternatively, we also found that stress actually enhances social bonds. When you feel stressed, the body releases oxytocin. What oxytocin does, it's involved in social bonding. So it promotes actions of finding individuals around you to bond with. And what's even more interesting is that this further enhances more release of oxytocin. And this is an incredibly adaptive response because as human beings, we're inherently social and our success and survival relies on our relationships with one another. So effectively, stress gives rise to this positive feedback loop where elevated levels of oxytocin increase social interactions and those social interactions further promote the increase of oxytocin, which leads to more social interactions. This could explain why some of your best friends are probably the people you endured organic chemistry with. <laughs> now we've talked about all these benefits of stress, but researchers have recently been asking another question. How can we maximize these benefits of stress? A group of researchers at Harvard University decided to run an experiment to answer this question. They had three groups of participants. The first group was told the best way to deal with stress is to completely ignore it. The second group was told the best way to deal with stress is to reappraise stress as being this positive, beneficial response. And finally, the third group was given no instruction at all. They then induced stress in all the participants by telling them they would be giving an impromptu speech. 
and they wanted to measure the physiological response to stress. The physiological response to stress is peripheral resistance, which is basically the resistance of the arteries to blood flow. If we expect a normal response to stress, we expect arteries to constrict and for peripheral resistance to increase. Now let's take a second to think about what these results should look like. If we expect our, our perception of stress to have absolutely no bearing on our physical, physiological response, we should expect that all the participants would exhibit the same increase in peripheral resistance, regardless of the group they were in, as seen by the data above. But this is not what the researchers found. In fact, they found that those who were told to reappraise stress as being this positive, beneficial response showed a significantly reduced increase in total peripheral resistance. This is such a powerful finding to suggest that how we think about negative emotions can affect how our body responds to them. So just reframing our position about something like stress can effectively lead your body to deal with that in so much better of a way. So the next time that you're overwhelmed or you're feeling stressed, think back to all these positive effects of stress and sadness. It allows you to reallocate attention towards problems that persist in your environment. It allows you to enhance your memories, increase social bonds. So the next time a wave of sadness or stress washes over you, I want you to repress the urge to ignore those emotions and instead choose to embrace them. Thank you.